Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Sahis Love here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind of Christ show. Um, thank you once again for um, um, gracing me with your presence here and everything. Uh, today was a little bit hectic, um, and so I had to change the time. I'm usually on at 1 p.m., um, but today, uh, uh, my original broadcast studio is being used now as a dance studio. Uh, my son is um, having a dance audition and it is still going on. Um, so um, we're just going to keep him up in prayer uh, that he gets into um, this um, prestigious uh, dance uh, intensive school uh, for the summer. So we'll continue with that. But today, today we're going to um, uh, talk. Uh, we're going to do some talking about um, Tabitha. Tabitha. Who is Tabitha? Um, she was a woman that lived um, um, during biblical times um, she was, um, she was a disciple, the Bible says, and she lived, um, and ministered in the city of Joppa, Joppa, J-O-P-P-A. Um, Joppa is today, uh, part of the city of Tel Aviv, um, in Israel, okay? Um, it's located uh, about maybe 60 kilometers uh, away north of Jerusalem. And then it's just, just south of um, Nazareth. And so um, where the, the Joppa, where she um, is originally from, um, Tabitha, uh, uh, who is also called Dorcas. Um, Tab Tabitha is the Aramaic, uh, her Aramaic name, Hebrew name, and then Dorcas is the uh, Greek uh, translation of her name. Um, Dorcas means, it means, uh, a, a doe or a female deer. And uh, Tabitha is Aramaic for gazelle or grace, okay? Um, and so this woman named gazelle grace, Tabitha, she lived, um, she lived around the time that uh, Jesus walked the earth. Um, and the Bible says that she was a disciple, um, but we first um, uh, get to know her or hear of her after Jesus dies, um, after the cruc crucifixion, okay? And so um, she, was a, she was a disciple and um, she, was a follower of Christ and she did her um, ministry and lived her life in the city of Joppa, okay? Um, the Bible doesn't spell it all the way out, but because of the situation, the, the uh, proximity of the city of Joppa um, uh, in between Jerusalem and uh, Galilee, Nazareth. I mean, um, it, it's it's very likely that um, to Tabitha she may have crossed paths with Jesus. Um, maybe she uh, was around when he would come through the various cities, teaching and preaching. Maybe she bore witness to um, some of the miracles and healings that Jesus did. Um, 
but you know wh whichever way um she came across uh jesus um she did <laughs> she came across them now um because of us finding out about her after jesus's death um you, she 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 was she was still ministering and everything um once peter had begun his ministry apostle peter and um uh, but uh peter didn't really he he didn't know her um so that gives me the um impression that um she she uh, got to know jesus or um, his teachings or what have you um, before uh, or, or, you know, while Peter, you know, walked with Jesus because Peter was one that walked with Jesus, but um, she wasn't amongst the women that um, walked with the disciples closely, okay? Um, but the Bible says that she was a disciple. In fact, she was, she's listed as um, the first, she's, she's one of, she's, she's uh, uh, the first woman listed as a disciple. There were um, plenty of women that followed Jesus and the, the, and the uh, male disciples but they were not recorded as disciples. They were recorded in the Bible as followers of Jesus, or uh, they were amongst the women uh, the Bible uh, refers to them as. But this woman, Tabitha, it, it states that she was a female disciple, okay? Um, and who was Tabitha? Tabitha was known as a woman that, um, she was known all around town as someone who was interested in and did good works. She, uh, ministered to the poor and ministered to widows particularly, but she was known for her very often acts of charity. Um, she was known for just doing good deeds and helping people all over. Um, she didn't have to know you, you know, if you needed help, she would do the best she could in terms of making sure that you got the help that you needed. She was particularly known amongst the widows um as you may know um the widows were um not considered um uh, uh societal you know high society people in the bible um the widows were very often amongst the poor um because they had, they were not, they, they were, their husbands had died and very often they didn't have sons that were there to financially take care of them or secure them. And so very often when um, a woman husband dies and her, if she has sons, um, and they don't uh, take on the responsibility of financially providing for her, she's very often left uh, to live a life of someone that was destitute or extremely poor, okay? And so uh, Tabitha, she would very often um, be seen ministering to the poor as, and uh, the widows. 
uh, she was she was a seamstress and she could sew, and so she uh, would sew garments for widows, coats, and um, dresses and out of garments. She would make them by hand for widows and um, uh, unfortunate people that, um, you know, didn't have the uh, money or means to get new clothes. Um, and so she would uh, be seen sewing by hand um coats and dresses and you know raiment for people to wear um and so and, and she didn't charge anything for it she just would make it and give it to them make it and give it to them make it and give it to them uh she also would help with you know uh bringing resources to the poor like food um and you know, contributing um, to uh, financially to causes that would help the poor and the widow, okay? And so she was very much beloved by the, uh, the widows and uh, poor people. She was very well known. They knew that if they needed help, um, if they can get to Tabitha, she would help them. And so she lived her life uh, dedicated to helping the poor and helping uh, widows. Um, and so that's what she did. Now, the Bible doesn't say um, much about her um, besides those things. Um, so we don't know if she was um, if she had children, uh, we don't know even if she was married. Um, we don't even know what kind of family she was from. Um, she was just um, known as a woman that would do good deeds and, and charitable. Um, she was also known as a, a a, a, a woman of faith like they knew that about her they knew that she was a disciple um and that she knew the lord and his teachings and she would just you know with out of service and love care for um widows and and poor people the like um she would um uh, care for anybody really, but she uh, did most of her ministry was catered towards the poor and widows. Okay, and so as she was going on with uh, her life, you know, um, making clothing and and you know uh, giving. Um, um, you know, paying for stuff and giving um, food out and and uh, just helping people. One day she she had gotten sick and she uh, fell ill and then died shortly after that. And when she died, um, the people in the um, community that she served, they they weeped and grieved sorely. The Bible says um, they get her, you know, uh, gather her remains, and they take them uh, to um, someone's home and lay her. Uh, on a bed, lay, lay her uh, her body, her lifeless body on the bed in an upper room, the Bible says. And uh, while she lay there, 
on the bank in an upper room, people came from different parts to, to grieve and to, to mourn. Um, many of the widows were there. The widows were there in mass and many poor people were there as well. Uh, she wasn't only known amongst the, the poor and the widow though. Um, people from the community, they also came and um, weep sorely. In fact, um, they weep so hard and they were so grief stricken by what they felt was Tabitha's untimely death. Um, the widows got together and they uh, went to the men in the community and told them what had happened. And soon word got out, even across um, other cities, that Tabitha had died. And um, when they when they spoke with the when the widow spoke with the men uh, to tell them that she had died, they uh, begged the men to go and the, the, the they begged the men particularly the men of God, to go and find Peter, okay, so that um, maybe he could do something because the widows, they were so, um, so much at a loss upon Tabitha's death that they really, many of them really could not see how they could go on. Tabitha ministered to them that much. Many of them depended on Tabitha and her ministry uh, for food, for clothing, for, 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 uh, for uh, grief counseling. These uh, women were widows. And, you know, upon the death of their husbands, not only did they have to deal with um, the loss of their husbands, but they had to deal with a change in their life circumstances um, because upon the death of their husband, many of these widows um, had no other resource or any other financial means to take care of themselves. And so they would come to Tabitha and, and Dorcas as a um, uh, her Greek name is, and they would, you know, uh, let her know what their uh, problems and issues were, and they would um, get the help that they needed. And so when Tabitha died, these widows and many of the poor um, uh, people uh, who depended on uh, Tabitha, uh, they were they they were in the uproar and so they these widows they went and they uh went to the men of god um in the city and uh begged them to go and find somebody do something because they didn't see how they they, they, they didn't see how that they could uh, continue to function and that the whole community had suffered a loss um a tremendous loss upon Tabitha's uh, death. And so the men, the men of God in the city, the, the word had traveled that Tabitha had died. And uh, Peter was in a city nearby. He was staying in a city nearby. And the word had gotten to him. The Bible said two men had uh, uh, came upon, went to uh, Peter and told him what had happened and, and, and spoke to him about this lady, Tabitha. And um, they explained to him that she had died and for him to come with them and to come quickly, come at once to um, see if anything that you can do to uh, on on Tabitha's behalf, um, and and try to relieve the sorrow 
of the city and the community uh, that, 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 uh, that arose from the news of the death of Tabitha. Now, Peter, he only thing he knew about Tabitha was that uh, she was a, she was a disciple. He didn't really know of her of her, um, but uh, these the two men that had came and begged uh, Peter to come, they uh, were so um, convincing and compelling that Peter decided to go. And so Peter goes and he comes quickly and he comes to the city of Joppa and he, they, they lead him to uh, the, the, the place where uh, Tabitha's body lay in, on the bed in the upper room. And upon Peter's arrival to the house where Tabitha lay, there was a whole bunch of people around whole bunch of people uh but the, the widows were there just wailing and 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 just you know crying out the the people in the community were crying and wailing you know um and so peter he sees all of this and he's looking around and he's like wow you know this lady must have been something she must have been somebody. And uh, the widows, they see Peter and they ask him, they beg him, can you do something? Can you do something? This woman meant so much to us. This woman uh, did so many acts of, of charity and, and, and did so many good deeds and she's been doing it for a long time. She's a follower of Christ. Um, she, uh, she would, would, uh, she would make clothing for us and the widows, the Bible says, showed Peter their, their raiment. Some of them had on some of the very clothing that Tabitha had made. And so they are showing Peter, you know, their coat and their dresses and their, their, their clothing that was handmade uh, individually, each piece by this lady, Tabitha. And by the time the widows got through explaining to Peter who Tabitha was, Peter decides, okay, I'm, I'm going in. I, I've heard enough. And he goes in into the house and goes up to the upper room where Tabitha lay. And Peter begins to pray. He, get, he begins to pray. Can you imagine um, in your mind's eye, Peter going upstairs to the upper room and he sees this woman's body laid out there, her lifeless body laid out. They had already started preparing it um, they had washed the body and, um, you know, uh, began, you know, put the spices on it and all of that to prepare it so that um, they would then um, bury the body. But before burying the body, somebody said it. It probably was one of the widows. They said, wait, we're going to believe God. We gonna there's something God got to do something, you know. Um, and those widows, you know, then told the man who told Peter, and now Peter is there, and he's looking at this body, and he's he goes to pray, and like I said, Peter didn't know her personally, but he was going by the accounts. Uh, the many, many accounts that the widows um, had get, had had uh, told him about, and the many, many accounts that the people from the community had told him about um, with regards to her. And so he goes to pray, and he goes and he prays before God, and he's asking the Lord to um, restore the life of 
uh, Sister Tabitha. And um, as he's praying, and he's praying hard because he doesn't really know how the story is going to come, you know, going, going to go. He just knows, okay, I, I can pray. That's about all I can do. I can pray. And I'm going to believe God and I'm going to pray. And that's what he did. And he prays. And then um, he prays again. And this time he turns uh, towards her lifeless body and prays to God again. And then um, he prays and he speaks to her, speaks to her body. And he says, Tabitha, arise. Similarly to the way Jesus uh, spoke to Jairus' daughter, when he, uh, when Jairus' daughter uh, had uh, gotten sick and, and fell dead, um, Jesus simply looked at her lifeless body and said, Talitha kumi, okay, which means daughter arise. Uh, Peter turns to Tabitha's body and he says, not Talitha, but he says, Tabitha, arise. Now, um, and upon hearing him call out to her like that, the Bible says she sits up. She opens her eyes and the life was restored fully unto her. And when she sits up, um, Peter sees her sitting up and he takes her hand and he holds it and he speaks with her and then he uh, he helps her up, helps her up to on her feet, and once helping her up on her feet, uh, he then uh, commences to bring her out of the upper room and presents her to the widows, the the, the, and the other people are in throughout in the community that were there. And upon seeing her standing in full life, the people rejoice. They rejoice. And um, the Bible says, upon seeing this, those witnesses that were there that saw that Tabitha now um, is amongst the living once again, they the news spread all over. And many people, upon seeing and hearing about Tabitha, the Bible says they too um, became converted and um, wanted to live uh, a, a Christian life. Many believed. And the same God that Tabitha talked about. Many believe in the same God that, that Peter prayed to. Many believed upon, upon that event. Many believed in that same God. That God that um, Jesus of Nazareth uh, taught and preached and healed in the name of. Okay, and so um, that was uh, an, a, a, a resurrection, but this was a resurrection that was different from the resurrection that um, that that was stated earlier in the Bible. This was in you can find Tabitha's story in the Book of Acts. Acts. Chapter 6, verses 36 through 40, 42. And um, the thing about uh, the thing about 
this particular resurrection um, was that this was a resurrection that was not done by Jesus directly. I know a lot of people think that number one, Jesus is re resurrecting himself was the one and only resurrection. That's not true. Some people know that Jesus uh, performed uh, resurrections before he resurrected. Okay. Uh, as I spoke uh, about before, um, he resurrected Jairus's daughter. Um, many of you know Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Okay. Um, the Bible accounts for at least um, three, three um, uh, people that Jesus resurrected or brought back from the dead before he was crucified. Three people, okay? Um, and so uh, Jesus, but Jesus wasn't the only one that brought people back from the dead. Now we find out uh, that Peter, who um, was a disciple of Jesus, he uh, prayed and God moved. And so Peter now um, has resurrected Tabitha from the dead. Um, if you were here with me last week, I spoke about another resurrection that happened um, back in the Old Testament in, um, uh, with, with Elijah. Elijah was another one that um, resurrected um, someone from the dead. And um, in the story of the, the widow from Zarephath, um, her son, um, Elijah had resurrected and raised her son up from the dead. Okay. Um, and and I, I, I spoke on that uh, resurrection last week, Sunday. If you missed it, um, you can go back and watch the replay. It's also on, um, it's also on uh, YouTube um, at Dunamis, at, at my Dunamis Sound Mind Service channel on YouTube. You can find that, um, that story um, and that discussion. Um, but uh, here, this is a, another resurrection. Um, the Bible actually accounts for um, at least 10 uh, situations where people were resurrected from the dead. Um, you may not have known that, but yes. Um, so there were at least 10 resurrections. Um, many, most of the resurrections, though, that occurred in the Bible um, Jesus had had did those, most of them. But Elijah had did um, a resurrection. Um, Elisha also, um, Peter, and Paul uh, also did a resurrection. Um, and so, but in looking at that, I asked the question, okay, um, Every time there's a res resurrection, there's also a birth, uh, a birth to something, you know, uh, because, you know, um, when the person dies, you know, the life that they had, um, things that they were doing, you know, that dies with them because they die. But when you are, when, when the resurrection happens, the person comes back to life, then there's, there's a rebirth, a reliving. And so um, I wanted to um, 
look more closely and find out what was the uh, rebirth or what was the birth that happened upon Tabitha's resurrection. What was the birth? Um, this woman, she was already a woman of faith. She knew the Lord, okay? And, and she had dedicated her life to service and good works and charity, okay? So this was a, 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 a sister that, um, you know, you could ask anybody from miles around about her and you couldn't find a person that would speak ill of her in any kind of way. Um, in fact, they would tell you, oh, yeah, I heard of her, you know, um, she, uh, she, she uh, would help out, you know, she helped me out when my money was low, or, uh, when I didn't have any clothing, or when I, uh, when I needed some food, she helped me out, you know, especially the people of Joppa, they knew her well, okay, um, they knew her by name, um, Tabitha, or Dorcas. Um, her name means gazelle or a doe, a female deer. Um, it also means grace. And this woman lived the life of grace. She uh, extended much grace, okay? But if she was doing all this stuff, in the city of Joppa, um, people knew that she was a disciple, even. Okay, so this lady, not how did they know that? Um, how did they know that about her? Well, as she would help the 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 poor, and she even uh, did good deeds and uh, would would. Uh, uh, provide, you know, uh, monies and resources. She did charity, you know, um, selflessly, selflessly, okay? She didn't have to know the people. She did it just because, okay? But how did they know uh, that she was a woman of faith? She, we don't know if she was a great big talker, but we know that she did so many acts and she um, was consistent with her charity and her ministry. She was consistent with it to the point where her ministry spoke for her, even after she had lost her life. So I had asked the question, um, what do you do when you're doing a uh, service or even your work when it goes unnoticed? Do you have times when you know you 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 completed a, a awesome project and you present it and uh, to your boss or what have you, and he goes. Oh, thank you. Next, you know, or what do you do when um, you've uh, spent a lot of time and energy, um, you know, uh, uh, caring for others and they don't even say thank you? Do you keep doing it, that thing, or do you stop and do something else? What do you do? Put it right there in the chat. Um, how do you feel when that happens? You've put a lot of time and energy into a particular project or into an endeavor, um, hoping to, you know, gain approval or just for a thank you. And all of a sudden you don't get it. Or uh, 
No one even acknowledges you for what you've done or even say thank you. How do you feel? What do you do? Do you continue on doing uh, those things? You know, um, some of you, you know, when church was open, you, you, you headed this ministry and you, and, you, and you did that ministry and you fundraised and brought in all this money, you know, for the church and for whatever cause it was. And um, your fellow church members, uh, maybe the leadership in their church, they barely said thank you. Or they forgot to acknowledge that it was you that did all of this work, all of this service. How do you feel when that happens? Do you, do you feel you know, slighted? Do you feel overlooked? Do you, what do you do? Do you complain? Uh, I was the one that, you know, brought the idea to the table. I was the one that orchestrated behind the scenes, you know, so that that program would be a success. I did it. I did it. Do you do that? Or what happens when you get overlooked or your name accidentally, maybe on purpose, doesn't get listed on the program amongst the thank yous in the back? Um, what do you do? How do you feel? Well, uh, that those kind of things happened to Sister Tabitha. Those kind of things happen very often to her. Um, but she didn't complain, nor did she stop doing her works of charity and her good works. Sister Tabitha Dorcas, she didn't, she didn't care about what others may have thought of her. Um, they, they probably talked about her. Yeah, they're gonna miss goody goody two shoes. You know, um, always out there with those widows. Now the widows, remember, they weren't high up on, you know, uh, uh, um, in status, in societal status. They, they weren't regarded very highly at all. Not many people wanted to be bothered with them, okay? They were uh, looked upon as, uh, you know, a, a, liabil a liability, societal liability, because here these women, their husbands died. They didn't have family that would um, financially provide for them, so... They relied upon the charity and benevolence of others in order to live, okay? Um, and so did the poor. For whatever reason, they didn't have, they had limited, very limited resources, if any. And so the rest of society, the rest of the community had to, um, if they wanted to, had to provide for them in order for them to, to live, you know. Um, and because those who uh, would, you know, do uh, charitable acts um, were so few and far in, in between, um, both, uh, the, 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 well, the widows and the poor, they had very meager uh, resources, barely getting by, you know. Um, and so they weren't regarded highly at all. Um, only those who 
felt compassion towards them would even care to help, okay? And Tabitha was that kind of lady. The Bible says she was compassionate, describes her as compassionate. She was a, 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 a woman of faith. And uh, she did all that she did out of love. She wasn't looking for pay. She wasn't even looking for any kind of notoriety. Um, she wasn't looking for accolades. She just simply did what she did out of the love and kindness of her heart and out of service and worship to her God. And so uh, because she was consistent in doing that, when sickness fell upon her, she still thought it not robbery to continue on helping people. She kept doing it. She didn't sit there and go, oh, no one really notices, you know, that no one really cares whether I live or die, so I might as well just, you know, shut down and stop, you know. She didn't uh, die the first time around even. She, she didn't die bitter. She got sick and she just died, you know. Um, and I get the impression that she was a humble woman. She wasn't, you know, someone that made a whole lot of noise, a big whoop, you know, when she showed up. You know, um, but yet people noticed her and they noticed what she was doing. They noticed how consistent she was. They noticed how she uh, spent time as well as energy uh, ministering to uh, those that she ministered to. Um, and it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. And so um, she, she walked it like she talked. But at the end of the day, it was her actions that spoke for her. It was her ministry that spoke for her. Even when she was unable to speak, even after her life had left her, people still remembered the times that she helped them. Uh, and all of those people that she had compassion and love for, they showed their love in return by uh, doing whatever they could do to make sure that she could uh, get prayed for or uh, at least have a proper burial because they had prepared her body, you know, um, for burial, but in the midst of them preparing her body for burial, somebody said, no, we're not going to just let her just go out like that. We just can't. She's done too much. She's done too much, and she means so much to us. And so they were able to compel the men. Now, these were widow women, the, pe the same people that's not considered, you know, um, they have very low status in society. These were the widow women, uh, the ones that um, didn't have uh, men um, to speak for them or to provide for them. It was the same ones, okay, um, that they gathered whatever they could gather. They, they uh, got together and came up with some kind of plan. They're like, no, we, we, we got to do something. We got to do something. And they were able to uh, find the men of God in that city, uh, have a, a, a talk with them and compel them to do something. And they even used the fact that she is a believer. You're a man of God. You are men of God. You have to do something for this fellow disciple. She was a disciple, you know. You, you're going to stand there and just let, you know, let things go by. She believed on Jesus. 
you know, and, and those widows was able to convince those men and those men went to um, Peter and compelled, begged Peter to come and see about this situation. And Peter was able to come and, you know, um, as I stated earlier, he was able to return a living Sister Tabitha uh, to her community. Uh, but like I said, whatever, what, whenever there's a resurrection, there's a birth somewhere. There's a birth somewhere. Where is the birth? Well, the Bible says that once uh, uh, Peter presented Tabitha, represented uh, Tabitha to the community and um, and the widows and everyone, and they saw that she was alive and well. They rejoiced. And then she continued to live a life for God. So there was the rebirth. Where was the rebirth for Tabitha? Well, I proposed the rebirth was this. Now, Tabitha had had some kind of encounter uh, with Jesus or the teachings of Jesus, you know, before. So much to the point where she um, became a disciple. Okay. Um, the Bible doesn't say exactly who, you know, continued teaching her um, exactly. It doesn't say it. Uh, but like I stated earlier, I believe that she um, had come across uh, Jesus and his teachings as he was, you know, uh, teaching and preaching throughout the cities. Um in Jerusalem and things of that nature. I believe that she was there um, listening in the crowd and she was a follower of him, but she wasn't all the way up close to the disciples. Um, but she followed. And I believe that, you know, after um, Jesus' death, she went back to her city that she's from, Joppa, and continued on. Um, um, doing good works, um, um, you know, and, and following teachings that she had learned from Jesus and the other disciples, okay? Um, but uh, I don't think she was um, taught by any of the other disciples. I think that she... Um, became a disciple while Jesus was walking the face of the earth. Um, but what was the rebirth? Now, she was already a woman of faith, a godly woman before she died. And so once she uh, got, uh, once she uh, got resurrected, what what else happened? What changed, if any? I propose that, because uh, the Bible says she continued living her life, uh, doing the good works and with charity um, and, and love of service, you know, to uh, those people. Um, I propose that this time around, after she got resurrected, she didn't only minister to the poor and the widows. I believe that her ministry got broader. Uh, what, what was the rebirth? What was the rebirth? Uh, what new got birth in her? Well, before when she was um, 
doing her works, her good works, her acts of charity. Um, the only people that knew of her good works were the people that were directly uh, impacted by her good works. The people of Joppa, they knew. They, they either knew of her or they were um, in direct contact with her. Um, but upon her resurrection, something happened. The Bible says that many believed. Upon seeing and hearing about Tabitha's uh, uh, rebirth, so to speak, they believed. And they believed not on the God that Peter uh, prayed to, you know, because they didn't really know Peter. They knew of Peter. They knew he was a disciple. They knew he was a man of God. And, you know, uh, Peter had to come to the city of Joppa, okay, in order to um, pray and um, resurrect Tabitha. Uh, but those people didn't know Peter like that. They did know Tabitha. And so when the, the Bible says when many, uh, many uh, people uh, got converted and, you know, became believers, they then became believers of the God that Tabitha believed in. It was her example as well as her ministry um, that caused them to believe. It was her life, the life that she um, that she lived before she died the, the first time um, that bore witness to who she was and the God that she served, okay? Um, and so I believe that the rebirth for Tabitha was that um, before she was that woman, okay? You know, the one that does the charitable deeds and the, uh, and, and, and the one that, uh, um, you know, caters to the widows and the poor. She was just that woman. Yes, yeah, some people knew her name. Yeah, that's Tabitha. She's always, she's always doing some good stuff. Yeah. She'll help you. You know, yeah, call Tabitha. They knew her as that. And it was those that were directly impacted by her ministry that even knew that she was a woman of faith. Okay, not everybody understood why Tabitha was, was doing what she was doing. They just was like, you know, those who were impacted by what she was doing, her works, they were glad that she's doing it. But there were other people who um, did charitable works and good deeds, but they were not necessarily disciples okay so that leads me to, un to 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 think that not only did tabitha you know do these things but she also spoke about what she was doing and why she was doing it she spoke about and let people know look i'm not doing this for this one over here or that one over there, not even for myself. I'm doing this in the name of my God. And so um, she she spoke about that. And um, But the Bible doesn't, you know, before, uh, before her death, um, the Bible doesn't mention her. You know, she was probably amongst the women in the crowd. She was simply a woman. That was it, you know. But upon her death, 
not only is she known as the woman that uh, did good deeds, she's called a disciple. Now, even uh, the women that followed Jesus and the disciples were not called disciples. At most, they were called followers of Jesus or followers of the way because that's what they called um, Jesus' teachings and preaching preachings uh his his uh his teachings um they, they refer to it as the way why because jesus said i am the way the truth and the light okay so they called it the way and she may have been amongst women that followed the way but upon her death she uh, got raised in status. Upon her death, we find out a little bit more about her identity. She gains an identity. Before her death, she was just a woman. Some may have knew her, knew her name, but she was just a woman. We don't know her status in society. We don't know if she was married or had children. We don't know any of that. We just know she was a woman, okay? But upon her death, she got a new identity. Upon her death, she, uh, she became a new person, but not a different person. She became a better person, okay? She was still the woman. She was still known as the woman who did the good deeds. But now she is called disciple. And they make that distinction so much that it is recorded in the Bible. You know, when you, um, when you look and read the story of Tabitha uh, in, in Acts chapter 6. Uh, verses 36 through 40, uh, 42. Um, it says early in that in the in that in the captions, um, a woman named Tabitha, who was a disciple. Okay, so early on in the in the text, we find out what her name is. We find out that she's a woman, find out what her name is, and we find out that she's not only a woman of God, but a disciple, okay? Um, she carried out those teachings um, of Jesus, okay? And so um, for me, I suspect that the rebirth that happened and that could only happen after she got resurrected was that her ministry extended, got wider. She was able to minister to more people um, because now people know who she is and who she represents. See, before she was that woman. And, you know, she, yeah, she does good deeds and stuff for the poor and, the, you know, the, the, the widows, you know. If you're not into uh, the poor or the widows, it doesn't hold any value. Her work did not hold any value to you. Did not care, you know, about her work. But after after she was resurrected, upon her death, let's let's go there. Upon her death, the the people who she ministered to made you understand that okay, she may not have meant much to you all, but she meant the world to me. I stand here blessed 
by her hands. I'm wearing her clothing that she made just for me. When I was naked, she clothed me. When I was hungry, she fed me. Why? Because she tended to the least of the, the of these. Okay? Um, and she did that imitating Jesus. She did that following his teachings. She did that out of love and dedication and worship to her God. And so um, after, now she did that before she died. And then after she died and rose again, got resurrected, she did it even more so. Because not only does she know that um, her God is real and loves her, uh, but she knows that he's close to her. He's He's as close to her as her own heart heart because of what he did for her. She got ministered to by the God that she serves. She got shown the very compassion that she poured out on others. God showed her compassion in a very um, in a very tangible way. He restored her life. Restored her whole. Wherever she might have been fractured or broken or lacking. The God that Peter prayed to moved on her and restored her fully. Made her whole. She was better than she was ever before. So you thought she did some good deeds and some uh, charitable works before her her resurrection. You should see the stuff that she did after, okay? Um, and so for me, the rebirth uh, of Tabitha was uh, her receiving uh, that confirmation, that um, renewed and restored hope. It was no longer hope. Now she know. She know because she's experienced the hand of God for herself on her life. She didn't no longer have to rely on other people's testimonies. She didn't have to rely on... Um, watching Jesus or the disciples in the distance. Her God came up close and personal to deal with her. And so that's where the river uh, happened. You know, I propose. Um, and for all of those, and God did that for Tabitha so that many others believed. When Tabitha was, you know, walking in the face of the earth before she died, many of those widows and those um, people that were impacted by her ministry, many, many of them grew to believe. Uh, many of them. But, and they believed somewhat. But upon seeing her resurrected, those who was kind of straddling the fence, they made a decision. I'm going to follow Christ. Those who had no idea, was just out there lost, they was like, I'm going to follow Christ. Because if he did it for her, he can do it for me. And so, um, even Tabitha herself, she now has a, a, a new testimony, an even more compelling testimony, okay, 
She had a testimony before, but afterwards, you know, um, she went on with the rest of her life, continuing to tell it, do it, show it, you know, for Jesus. And so, uh, do you, what do you think about Tabitha's life? Both of them, okay? Um, do, would you like to have a life like that? Think about it. The same God that Tabitha lived for, died, and then relived again. You can have that same God. Yes, you can. The only thing you have to do is give your life to him. That's all. And you can give your life to him. The steps are simple. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus uh, is Lord, Jesus died and rose again for your sins, you are saved. It's just that simple. And so if you'd like to invite Jesus into your heart, and establish uh, that relationship uh, with him, the one that died and rose again for the sins of you and I. You can repeat after me. Simple little short prayer. Lord Jesus, I, I know that you are God, I invite you to come into my heart and save me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again for me and my sins. Lord Jesus, be the Lord of my life and save me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, if you repeated after me, guess what? Jesus has come and he's in your heart right now. Believe it by faith. And you too now have the God that Tabitha served, the God that Peter prayed to, the God that the, the disciples spoke about. You too have that very same God. And because you have that God, uh, you have Jesus. Jesus died. He rose again. He was able to get up out of everything. He was able to conquer death, hell, and the grave. And because he got up, so can you and I. Because he got up, so did Tabitha Dorcas. Because he got up we can get up to. Okay. Well, thank you for letting me share. Um, that's all that I have right now. Um, if you got questions, comments, put it in the chat because I want to see them. Now I'm just going to, I'm looking for my other device so I can quickly, um, quickly um, do a roll call. But I don't know where my other device is. Hmm. I'm wondering. Yeah, 
Oh, there it is. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah, so I'm going to just look to see who's with us here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to those who um, were able to tune in uh, yesterday as we um, uh, spoke yesterday um, on, on, on the uh, Sanity Saturday show. And yesterday we spoke on, um, it, it, the name of the video was Last Call for Alcohol. And um, thank you for all of those who were there with me uh, and um, uh, put something in the chat and made your comments and questions. We discussed um, binge drinking and excessive uh, consumption, the effects of uh, overly consuming alcohol. Um, and we did that in honor of um, Alcohol Screening Awareness Month. Um, last week, April 7th, was Alcohol Screening Awareness Day. And so um, thank you all for that, that were able to join me um, during the live. And thank you to those who uh, watched watch the replay afterwards. Um, so if you uh, didn't get a chance to see that, you can uh, do that now. Um, okay, so I have, all right now, thank you for all of you all that, uh, uh, that tune in and tune in every week. Um, I am feverishly um, just uh, tying up ends and, and uh, getting things together so that I can bring you these broadcasts um, in a more excellent way and in a more efficient way. Um, yesterday, I was able to broadcast simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Um, and and um, you know, I'm I'm getting I'm getting the hang of this. And so, uh, as you can see. You know, um, the videos are getting better and better. <laughs> so, um, uh, and I thank God for uh, for the progression and the growth. Okay, all right. So, I see here, um, my boo, Mr. Kenneth Love, is on and watching. Hey, how are you, sweetheart? Thank you. Um, I see. Uh, Reverend Flo Changajita is on and watching. How are you? Thank you so much. Okay. And she goes, only Jesus. Hallelujah. And she said, the, the body was changed. That's right. Um, the, the, the body, the, her, her, uh, Dorcas Tabitha's whole body was changed. And the, the body of Christ changed because we had now a whole bunch of new believers. Upon seeing her um, get resurrected from the dead, we had a whole bunch of new uh, saints and believers. You're absolutely right. And then she goes, um, do it as unto God. He, uh, he repays you. That is true. Exactly. Um, Dorcas did everything uh, unto her God. Even when it went unnoticed, untalked about, even during those times and through those times where she didn't even get a thank you or an acknowledgement. Okay. Um, she was a, a, a disciple, but, you know, uh, her name wasn't called out, you know, all over. In fact, some of you might have, might be just hearing about her for the first time today. Yet, 
She's recorded in the book. She's recorded in the book of life for her deeds. Um, and her life speaks for her. Okay. Um, and she's listed um, as a female disciple. Not even the other male disciples wanted to acknowledge those women that followed them as disciples, as followers of Jesus. They were just there. And those women, they assisted uh, the ministry in, with the ministry of Jesus. Some of them financed the ministry of Jesus. Okay, many of them put up their houses and opened their, their homes to um, people gathering so that they could hear Jesus as he uh, taught and preached. Okay, the women were doing that. All right, um, but you don't see the women that followed Jesus and the disciples, you don't, you don't see it listed that they were disciples. Mary, Jesus' mother, was she not a disciple? Um, Mary Magdalene, was she not a disciple? Okay, but She's not listed um, as a disciple. Why? Because the writers, the ones, uh, the, the, those disciples, men, who uh, recorded these events, you know, and they wound up in the Bible, those men chose not to um, list the women as such. But Dorcas, Tabitha, she's there listed as such. Uh, so that even if Peter didn't want to refer to her as a disciple, uh, the people in her community uh, made it clear to him that she was sure enough, a follower of Jesus. So she is listed as a female disciple. So all of you all that might think the disciples were only males, that's not true. That's not true. Okay, I'm going to continue on. Uh, and Reverend Flo Chengajita says, it doesn't feel good when you're not acknowledged, but when it's not about you, you know, then it's, it, 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 you know, you don't, you don't stand there and stay in that feeling. And I understand that. And that's true. Because for Tabitha, Sister uh, Dorcas, she did what she did, not out of herself. Not for herself. She did what she did for uh, those that she felt compassionate towards. Those that she recognized as God's people. Even if society didn't recognize them as such. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Flo Changajina. Okay. Um, anymore. And then she goes on to say... Um, you have joy in doing what you are doing and God rewards you. Um, and she said, she personally has proven that in many times over. She took, uh, Reverend Chang Ajita is talking about she herself has proven that as well as um, Sister uh, Disciple Tabitha has proven that. Okay. Uh, hey, boo. All right. And then um, 
she goes on to say, yes, they were disciples. Um, from Flo Chang of Jesus answering the question when I asked, was not Mary mother of Jesus and Mary Magdalene um, and those women who walked uh, with the disciples and Jesus. They were behind, you know, uh, but they were there and they were there and um, in ways that uh, not necessarily regarded as, um, you know, important, but they were there. And even though the disciples didn't re uh, regard what those women did, their contributions as important, enough, uh, what they did still um, aided and pushed the ministry of Jesus forward um, along with um, the disciples. Okay, so um, are there any questions? I'm just checking to see are there any more comments? And um, okay. So if there, if that be all, I will wrap up this session. Thank you once again uh, for uh, allowing me to share and spending time with me. Thank you for all of those that, uh, uh, for your comments. Um, and thank you for those who will be watching um, this video um, in replay. Thank you in advance for your comments, your questions. Um, because that is, for me, what makes uh, these videos what they are. Um, and uh, I pray that it blesses you. These videos bless you um, and enrich your life and bring you a bit closer to Jesus. Okay? And so thank you. Uh, thank you to all of you who are watching in the background. I know you're there, but even more importantly, God knows that you are there, okay? And so continue on um, tuning in and I'm working out, um, you know, a way to have a set schedule because that works best for me, but there's a lot going on, um, even here, you know, and so my, um, uh, my, my, in my home, you know, we have uh, a lot of things going on, but we uh, don't um, allow all of those different things that are going on to stop God and his work. And so um, I want to um, uh, thank uh, publicly my uh, loving husband and my family, my sons, uh, because they they tolerate me with my, you know, uh, broadcasting uh, and and all that comes with that, you know, and they lovingly allow me to um, share and go forth. Um, I want to thank uh, my my oldest son particularly today. My son, Nayeri, who uh, allowed me to uh, borrow his sanctuary, his room, just so that I would have a space to um, bring forth uh, this message. And so thank you, Nayeri. Um, God, and God bless you. God knows. Uh, what you um, sacrificed today, and I thank you, uh, but um, uh, Jesus knows how to thank you himself, so God bless you, and thank you all so much. Um, shout out to um, my, uh, my, 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 my goddaughter and my um, future daughter-in-laws, 
Uh, I know you're watching. And my sons. I see y'all. I see y'all. They're in the background. But thank you for your support and um, your encouragement in allowing me and encouraging me to do this. Because um, I don't do this out of myself. I do this for God and for you all. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. I will be on again tomorrow um, around 11 <laughs> um, for the um, Me Time Monday show. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about other ways that we can take care of ourselves and improve our self-care so that we can improve our health, our overall health. And so uh, join me tomorrow uh, here on, um, on Facebook and on um, my YouTube channel. Uh, you can go there and subscribe and see the videos that I have there. Um, don't forget to like and share the videos, even this one. Share it with those that um, can really use it. Uh, that it will encourage them, okay? Um, and so uh, subscribe uh, at my channel at Dunamis Sound Mind Services on YouTube, okay? Um, and I'll be on again next week, Saturday, for the uh, Saturday Sanity Show at 6, and then again upon Sunday. Uh, at one uh, next week, uh, unless otherwise directed. But thank you, thank you so much. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and have a blessed week. Bye-bye now. Take care.